I'd love to be one of those evolved girlies that's like, oh my God, age is a privilege. Like obviously age is a privilege. Like I don't want to be dead, but <laughs> I also want to age like Gabrielle Union, you know? Like I want to look the fuck good. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Vulnerable. I am your host, Chelsea Vaughn, and I'm riding solo today. This is my first time commuting into the city, to the studio from my new New Jersey place. Um, I'm being so dramatic on my story. I'm like, oh my God, off to the big city for the first time. <laughs> um, in reality, it was 30 minutes for me to get to the studio from my Brooklyn place, and now it's like 32 minutes, so it's not bad at all. Um, but I'm here. I'm all moved into my place. I had just celebrated my birthday. Um, and everything's going well. Uh, the new place is great. It's everything I thought it was going to be. The windows are like the light of my life. Like I love waking up and rolling up the blinds. And I was joking on my story that I'm totally the naked neighbor because, um, I just hate wearing pants in my own home. You know, it's like when you live alone, you have a roommate and like your roommate comes home or they bring their boyfriend and you're like, oh, I got to put on pants. Like, I feel like that all the time because I can directly see, like make eye contact with people across <laughs> across the way. Um, and our one neighbor like directly across from us has a cardboard cutout of a person. I don't know if it's a celebrity or like who it is like sitting at a desk. So it always looks like someone is sitting there staring at us. <laughs> um, I don't know if that was a joke or what, but Anyways, um, but I've seen those people too, and I'm sure they've seen me naked slash in my underwear. But I'm, I mean, I got to get the good light. I got to record my stories for you guys. So I'm not putting the blinds down so they can enjoy the show. Um, but today I was thinking it'd be fun to do an AMA episode, Ask Me Anything. I think it was my first 10 episodes I did an episode like this um, where I literally just went through all of you guys' questions and answered them. And it was fun. And... I can always reference back to that too whenever, because I usually do like my Sunday Q and A's every week. And a lot of you guys ask me the same questions or like new followers come in and ask me questions. So I always can like reference back and be like, oh, I answered that in more detail on the pod. Um, so I'm gonna go through what you guys asked me. First up, there were a couple questions about like living with Austin and versus living alone. Um, so somebody asked me, I think this is funny. Is there any secret single behavior that you miss now that you and Austin live together? Um, it reminds me of that episode of Sex and the City where Carrie's like secret single behavior that you do when like there's not a guy around or whatever. Um, I think I kind of just like miss being gross. That sounds weird, but it's like you're not going to be like necessarily like disgusting in front of your boyfriend. Not that I'm like... <laughs> Not that I'm like really gross, but like, you know what I mean? Like I would sometimes just like order delivery and like be a slob. And like one of my guilty pleasures is just literally sitting in my bed with delivery and eating because I feel like eating in your bed is kind of gross, but like gross in a guilty pleasure kind of way. So I really only do it when I'm like about to wash the sheets. Like if it's the sheets are like a week and a half old, I'm like, OK, I'm going to wash them soon this is the time where I could eat in my bed and just be a slob. Not that I'm like rubbing hot sauce on the sheets or anything, but like just eat in my bed and not have to worry about it. Maybe this is a Virgo thing because I'm just like, I don't want, I literally told you guys in the other episode, I'm like no outside clothes on the bed, no shoes on my bath mat and I'm like eating in bed. It sounds hypocritical. It sounds it, sounds it but no, only if the sheets are like kind of dirty and they're gonna get washed soon will I like full on have a meal in bed and I still put paper towels down. But Austin is not a bed person at all. And by that, I mean like some people hang out in bed, like work in bed, do things in bed, lounge in bed. He's one of those people that's like, my bed is for sleeping. And honestly, that's the healthy thing to do because apparently your brain, like when you just make your room for sleeping, it's better because you fall asleep faster and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what I do. I lay in my bed all the time. <laughs> Um, and he's just not a bed person. So then it makes me feel like I can't just like lay there because I feel like a complete sloth. Um, and sometimes he's not gonna listen to this. Sometimes, um, like he'll leave and then he'll be gone. Like he'll go to the gym 
and he'll be gone for like a few hours, come back, and I'm quite literally in the same spot, like haven't wiped the crust out of my eyes, like haven't moved, and like he'll text me like, oh, on the way home, and I'm like, shit, like <laughs> go wash my face and like pull myself together so that he doesn't think I'm a complete disaster that's been in the same spot, like on my phone. But it's just hard because like my job is on my phone, so I will be sitting there working for three hours and like get caught up making like some TikToks or like editing something or checking my emails or whatever, and then I just haven't moved for two hours. Um, but yeah, I kind of miss being a bit of a slob, but I can't really tell him to like pick his underwear up off the floor if I'm going to be gross too. So I have to now clean my act up because I can't be a hypocrite. <laughs> um, somebody else asked something similar, like, do I miss living alone? Um, uh, I wouldn't say that. Like, I think I just got used to having Austin in my space now because he was in my Brooklyn apartment too for like six months. But I think when he first moved in there, I probably was like, damn, I kind of miss being alone just a little bit. You just get used to it. Like it, I'm just not used to having anybody like there all the time. But I would much rather live with him than live alone. So I miss it a little, but not really. Um, How far are you from New York? I just answered that one. It's literally one stop to World Trade Center. And then like two stops to Christopher Street, which is in like Soho. So it's like at the quickest, 10 minutes. Um, it's really not far at all. And I can also take the ferry, which I haven't done that, that yet. Somebody else asked, hi, Ashlyn. Um, what podcast goals do you have that have shifted since you've grown the audience? Huh. Well, I have a vision board that I made at the beginning of this year. And... It's my phone background. I don't know if you could see this, but it's 100,000 downloads was my goal for 2023. And I'm hovering around 50K right now. And that's not even including YouTube. So I'm just, I'm like halfway there. And I feel like a couple of good episodes and I can make that goal. So I feel like 100K hasn't shifted, but that's like one of my goals. Um, what has shifted since I've grown? I mean, I was really focused on getting 1,000 subscribers for YouTube, which I got. Thanks, guys. Um, obviously I want to keep growing that, but I wanted to hit a thousand on YouTube and I don't know. I think the goals would kind of just to be, have more amazing guests. Like obviously I started out not easy, but like it is easy for me to have my friends on and have bachelor people on. And I also know that's like, going to make you guys listen. Obviously you got to know me on the bachelor. Um, but I'm running out of friends. <laughs> I'm running out of friends and I'm running out of bachelor people and I'm going to have to start branching out. But I feel like the episodes that I do with people that maybe aren't as well known or like they are well known, it's just in different areas, I guess, of the entertainment industry. Um, the episodes don't really do as well. So then it's kind of just like, I don't know, I have to decide between that and then the episodes doing better because I know, okay, I can easily get more listens if I do a bachelor person. But then if I do somebody else, it's like nobody knows who that is and they don't want to listen or whatever. Um, so I'm still kind of trying to figure that out. But I think I need to maybe aim higher when it comes to my guest list because not higher. That sounds bad. That makes me sound like I was... <laughs> <laughs> it makes me sound like um, my friends were not high. Not saying that at all. I'm just saying like I think about people that I want to have on. Then I'm like I'm kind of hard on myself and I'll be like, okay, well, maybe when the podcast gets a little, you know, bigger or people know more or it's a little better. Um, and then I could just keep doing that forever, like criticizing and criticizing and being like, oh, it's not good enough yet. I can't ask this person or, oh, it's not good enough yet. No, I just need to ask. And then if they ignore me or say no, I can ask them again later if it is bigger or better, whatever. Um, I also really want to have a party. Like I wanted to have a launch party originally, but a lot goes into making a party happen. And I wanted it to be like a really good one. Like I didn't want to have ass it. So I feel like when I hit a milestone, I would love to have like a vulnerable party where I invite people and have like the down like Spotify on a QR code on the coasters and stuff. And there's like vulnerable logos everywhere. And then like a, we have a big screen. We could play an episode on the like TV or the projector. Like I think that'd be really cool. Um, something vulnerable branded. That's definitely a podcast goal. Um, Tanya asked me, do I ever feel stressed and anxious and how do I deal with it? Love the podcast. Thanks, Tanya. 
Um, yeah, <laughs> I definitely do feel stressed and anxious a lot. Um, I think with moving and announcing my relationship and everything else that was happening at the exact same time, I feel like a lot hit me at once. Um, so I was stressed and I had never, I don't think in my life before, been clenching my jaw um, unknowingly in my sleep. But I've been doing that lately. And also my hair is like shedding a lot, like falling out. So I'm like, is this stress or is this just like, you know, when your hair goes through seasons where it kind of just like sheds a lot, it could be that. I don't know, but I'm stressed the fuck out. Um, and what do I do to make it better? Not much. <laughs> How do I deal with it? Not well. Um, I, I should probably exercise. I think I know when I do work out and like I have more of a routine and I actually like make sure to go to bed at a decent time, wake up early, get some exercise in, or at least a walk or something like that does make me feel better. And I think just starting your day with movement or like going outside in fresh air or whatever, um, it always makes me feel better. And I'm just, I'm not a morning person as much as I would love to be. Like when I wake up in the morning, I'm early. I'm like, oh, this is so great. Like I have so many hours in the day, like so much time to do everything. But I just, unless I have like a really good reason, I just cannot force myself to get up early. So I usually get up around like 9, 9.30. Um, and now that I have a gym in the apartment, I feel like maybe a goal for September could be for me to like go down to the gym first thing in the morning. At least do like 12, 3.30 or something on the treadmill. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, but I used to like genuinely enjoy working out. Like I don't know what happened. I used to like... I was that person that went to the gym almost every day of the week. And then if I didn't go, I felt bad about myself. Like, I was like, oh, my God, I didn't go today. Like, where is that girl? I don't know. I left her in, like, 2019. Um, as far as anxiety goes, um, I haven't been super anxious lately, which is good. Um, I think having more space in my apartment and more light and just, like, a cleaner space that makes me feel good to come home to is helping because I feel like you don't realize until you're out of a space, like how much that really affects you. And I just didn't love my old apartment. Like I loved it in a charming kind of way, but it just felt like I grew out of it and I was just ready to leave. Um, and it, it just, yeah, it just parts of it was just so dark and I don't know, it just wasn't making me feel homey and happy. So I feel like being in the new space is helping anxiety wise. Um, but I always like to say journaling, which, I haven't done in a while, but journaling does help whenever I'm feeling super, super anxious. I'll just like word vomit all my thoughts into a notebook and it makes me feel better. Hmm. What else? Oh, let's talk about my hair more because everyone really loves to ask me questions about this. Um, and maybe I just noticed because it's a sensitive topic for me, but like every time I've done a QA and a lately, you guys have so many hair questions. This person, Brie, says, love, love your short hair. Are you currently growing it out? Currently, I have no idea what I'm doing, to be honest. Um, the plan was to grow it out so I could get my braids. But then I started growing it out. The plan was to grow it out. And I thought like, OK, you chop off your hair. You start from scratch. It's going to grow back. It's going to be so healthy. Like it's never been like heat damaged. It's never been dyed. It's never been this. It's never been that, whatever. Um, this is what I thought, but my hair had other plans. So it's just like not, it's just not giving what I thought it would give. Like, it's just not that healthy. It's all different lengths. Like when I tried to straight, like blow it out for the braids, it was a mess. Um, it's just not trained to be straight anymore. Like my old hair, <laughs> before I cut it off, like I had been straightening it forever. So it was used to being like, blown out and flat ironed and all this other stuff like manipulated but like this version of my hair that just grows straight out of my head is incredibly tight and coarse and curly and it's like it was not having it with the blow dryer obviously I could go get it professionally done but I think I just need to trim like I started the growing out process when I still had my hair bleached which I think was another mistake I didn't think about it because I've never tried to grow hair that was bleached before. Like anytime I bleached it, it was when I had it like shaved super, super short. Um, so now the ends are like 
bleached and the bleached ends are like tangling with the new growth that's coming in and it's just like a mess. So I need to cut off the blonde in the back. Um, and after that, I really don't know. I'm like ready to quit, to be honest. I've come so far and I'm ready to quit because I'm just like, I, it's just stressing me out. Like it's just making me anxious and it's just making me feel all the things that I felt before I cut it off in the first place. And it's just hard to deal with and I don't feel cute. And I'm just like, damn, this is why I cut it in the first place. Um, strangely enough, I feel like cuter and more pretty when I'm completely, totally bald than when I have my hair like this. So I'm just like, I don't know what the plan is. I don't know what I'm trying to do, but I also don't know if I want to like come this far just to give up and cut it all off. Um, we'll see. <laughs> but fashion week is coming up and I don't want to be like getting my picture taken and I don't know, on red carpets and whatever else. Like also I'm going to Europe. I don't know. I just want to feel cute when I go do all these things and take all these pictures. My whole life is taking pictures and I can't have all of this <laughs> be happening when I don't feel like my best self. Um, I also feel like it ages me a little bit. Like this might just be me, but I just feel like this hair makes me look older and I'm not trying to look older. Like I'd love to be one of those evolved girlies that's like, oh my God, age is a privilege. Like obviously age is a privilege. Like I don't want to be dead, but <laughs> I also want to age like Gabrielle Union, you know, like I want to look the fuck good. <laughs> um, I think you can be both and I am both. Um, yeah, so that's the story on the hair. I don't know what I'm doing. This is what it is right now. So this is how it's going to be for a bit. By the time this episode comes out, it might look different. I don't know. I need professional help. Can somebody DM me some black hairstylists in Jersey City? Um, because I need I need someone. That's when my hair was the best. When I lived in Harlem and I had my girl, her name was Ray, and I would just go see her every other week. I definitely could not afford to do this at the time, but it was like a priority because I was like, you know what? I can't do my own hair. She's keeping it healthy. She knew what she was doing. It was growing. We would get trims regularly. It was a whole thing. Um, I need to find a new girl. Let's take a quick break and then I'll come back and see if there's any more good juicy questions. Okay, we're gonna answer a couple more. You guys sent in a few more. Someone asked, would I ever get a pet? Okay, this is something that I've wanted. My mom's going to laugh at this since I was little because I was begging my mom for a dog. Actually, this is – I'm probably like one of the only people in the world. I've never had a pet of any kind, not even a goldfish, like nothing. I've never had a single pet. I asked my mom for a dog. I asked her for a – I think at one point I had like a rabbit phase. I had like a – what do you call them? Hamster. My mom was like, those are disgusting. We're not having those in the house. I'm not taking care of a dog. I don't like cats. My mom's allergic. So I've never had a pet of any kind. And I've always wanted a dog. And then I moved to New York. And I just think like, no offense to all the dog people. I think it's a little selfish to have a dog here if you're going to be out all the time, traveling all the time, and you live in a tiny apartment. Like, I don't want to get a dog just for when I'm home and then the poor dog has to, like, sit there and suffer all day and night when nobody's there to hang out with it. Like, I feel like that's kind of fucked up, especially when I was, like, in a small place with no yard or, like, no park. Like, and then it's winter. Like, I don't I don't want him to just pee on a pee pad, like, in my apartment. Like, it's – I don't know. I just feel like I should wait until I have at least a door where I can just, like, let him out to the backyard or something. So I'm waiting on the dog front, even though I really want one, um, to, I don't know, perhaps get a house. Where I'm going to do that and when I'm going to do that, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> but that kind of leads into another question where somebody asked me, like, oh, are you going to be in New York forever? I don't know that answer either, but probably not. I never saw myself staying here forever, ever. Like, I think it's a fun city to be in when you're young and you're going out all the time and all your friends are here. But my friends are hitting that stage of life where it's like um, they're about to all settle down and leave. Like I have two really close best girlfriends still here. And well, by the time this episode comes out, she'll be engaged. But my best friend's about to get engaged. <laughs> she doesn't know this. Um, and my other best friend – well, she'll be getting engaged soon and she's going to move to Philly. So like I think my other friend's going to move back to Atlanta. And then who am I going to hang out with here? Like it's just going to be me and Austin and I'm just going to be living my little 
settled down Jersey life, I guess. Like, I don't know. They're going to leave and go get houses. And I just feel like there's no point in staying in New York if you're not going to be going out and enjoying the city. Like, that is the part. It's the location that you're paying for. So we're all here. We're all like, New York's the greatest city ever. I'm willing to pay these crazy prices because it's, you know, you live in the city, blah, blah, blah. If I'm not even going out anymore, like, I could do that in Atlanta. Like, for, I don't know. $2,000 a month (laughs) or have a whole ass mansion for what I'm paying in Jersey City. Um, And I just, I mean, I grew up in a house and in the suburbs. Like, I just don't see if I'm having kids in the next, I don't know, five to 10 years. I don't see raising them in New York City as an option. I just don't think I could do that comfortably unless I all of a sudden get stupid rich. So send the podcast to all your friends (laughs) so I can can get some more downloads. But um, I don't see that happening. And I don't, I just, the, a nightmare for me is imagining myself being one of those ladies that's like struggling to carry their stroller up the sub- subway stairs. Like you see those poor women that are like trying to get up the stairs and then like a guy like runs to help them. And it's like, I, that, that sounds like a nightmare to me. I do not want to do that. Um, yeah. And I mean, realistically, people that are not super rich and have kids in New York have to take the train. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to be here forever. I definitely have at least a few years left in me, I think, but definitely not forever, ever. One more person asked if there's anywhere in the world that I could live money, no object for six months and everything was the same when I got back to New York, where would I choose to live? I feel like I'll do like a astronomical one and then like a realistic one. Realistically, I would love to live somewhere that I can speak the language. So that narrows down my options a lot. (laughs) Um, I really like Canada, obviously. I found love there. You know, the people are so nice. I like Toronto a lot. Like, I feel like that's a cool city to live in or London. (laughs) Um, I haven't been to London yet. I'll circle back with you guys on if I like it. I heard the food's bad though. And I really, I can't live anywhere with bad food. That's horrible. Um, Yeah. And then like my astronomical answer, this is going to be, I mean, I haven't been to so many places that I want to go. I think Australia would be cool. Um, I want to live like I would want to live probably on the beach, like on the beach near the water where I could like be by the ocean every day. They speak English in Australia. That was another one. Okay, next Canada. We're not going there. (laughs) Sorry, Canadians. Love you guys. Um, Australia would be a better option. Um, Italy seems cool. I think Europe, Europe is just, yeah, I haven't been to Italy, but Italy seems like a cool option. I think they're nice to Americans there, even if they don't speak Italian. I don't know. But I just think I could have a little eat, pray, love moment. Get, eat all my pasta, drink all my wine, hang out. I could be on the coast there too, by the ocean. So I feel like for six months there, honestly, I think I told you guys this, but I was thinking about um, if Austin and I didn't move in together and if I didn't find an apartment, <laughs> if a lot of things didn't happen, putting my stuff in storage and just like traveling for a few months until the prices went down in New York. But it didn't work out because Austin needed to be here to work and – I actually don't know what I would have done about the podcast. I didn't think about that part. I guess I could have like pre-recorded a bunch of episodes. I don't know. Um, But I was like, okay, when else in my life am I going to have a job where I can just bop around the world for a few months? Like who gets to do that? I feel like I should probably take advantage of that um, in the next couple of years because I don't know. Like when I had a corporate job, it's like you can't take that much time off unless you put your job to just go somewhere for months at a time. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of logistics involved in that. So who knows? But okay. My answer is Italy slash Australia. (laughs) Um, I could also, I, I, I was trying to learn Spanish, but I've kind of taken a large hiatus, but, um, I think a Spanish speaking country would be cool. Then for six months, I mean, I could probably learn a decent amount in six months. If I was somewhere where they really don't speak English, like you don't really have a choice at that point. You kind of just pick it up. Um, okay, one last one. How do you negotiate your pay disparity? This is interesting. I kind of talked about it with Rachel Lindsay a little bit, 
Um, so I have a manager. Shout out to Elisa. She lives in LA. She takes care of me. Um, and she's kind of the li liaison between me and the brands that I partner with. So she really does all the negotiating on my behalf. But I mean, I trust her opinion because she's in the industry. She also represents a lot of different people like younger, older, TikTok, Instagram, whatever platform, like white, black, like she represents a lot of people and she sees what they're getting paid. So it's kind of like, I just have to trust her when she tells me like, hey, I wouldn't do this because this brand isn't paying you what you're worth. Like she will straight up tell me and be like, this isn't a good one. Like if you really wanna do it, you can. She always presents me with the opportunity still, but if it's something that she really thinks is like not, it or like I'm not getting what I deserve to get, she will tell me. Um, so she really negotiates and she always pushes super hard for me to make sure I'm getting paid what I deserve to be paid. So I'm very grateful for her. Um, as far as like when I negotiate myself, I don't know, it's kind of tricky because there's a weird line in between like modeling and influencing. So it's like if someone's asking me just to model for something, that might be a different rate than like posting something or just showing up to something. There's a lot of different things. And like, that's funny because Austin actually just texted me right before this episode and was asking me my pay rate for something. Um, but yeah, it depends on how they're using the images and videos, how long they're using them. There's a lot that goes into it. And you just gotta trust people who are experts at what they do. Like I'm not a negotiator and I'm not like in it like my manager is. So I trust her opinion more than like she knows what she's talking about more than I do. So, yeah. But my tidbit on that would be always ask for more <laughs> because I've learned that the hard way. If you ask someone for a rate and they just say, OK, then you shorted yourself. <laughs> like you should ask for more. If they're not giving you pushback or trying to um, negotiate or meet you in the middle or, or anything, then you ask for too little. And with all these companies, especially with freaking capitalism and like this influencer industry, like they have the money. So I always ask for more and let them say no. Um, and I think my manager operates that way too. Um, okay, I think that's it guys. Those were some pretty good questions. Um, yeah, that's really it for the episode. You guys know where to find me by now. I hope it's at Chelsea Vaughn on Insta, at Chelsea Vaughn underscore on TikTok and at vulnerable pod on youtube but i will see you guys next episode Bye.